نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Uh, Assalamu alaikum brother. Uh, as I was driving to the masjid, I saw a truck in front of me and uh, I wanted to take a picture of the bumper sticker on the truck. So I got late, I apologize to so all of you. The, the bumper sticker, sticker said, do no harm. And uh, I posted on, on Facebook for those of you who follow that. It reminded me of the hadith, la darar wa la darar, do no harm and do not respond to harm. It is, uh, when I see these kind of things, it, it, it kind of makes me a little sad because our heritage, our Islamic heritage has these sources of wisdom. It is one of the 42 hadith in the collection of Imam Nawaz. It has been viewed and listened to on YouTube hundreds and thousands of times. We all know these things. But unfortunately, people who seem to reach these conclusions through historical experiences seem to act more on it than those of us who have achieved this same wisdom through revelation. So we have been given ready-made packages. We don't have to experience history, analyze history, reflect upon it, do research to reach the same conclusion. Prophet ﷺ simply told us this, and if only we had listened and would. I also want to uh, wish you uh, blessings for this month of Pavaja. This is one of the four holy months. And uh, this is one of the months in which we are not supposed to fight. Uh, and look at the Muslim world today, unfortunately. Since fighting seems to have become a default status of the Ummah, uh, the only time we are not fighting is when we are taking a break from the fighting or preparing to fight again. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his holy book, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alam ta'a anna allaha ya'alamu maa fi samawati wa maa fi laj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he knows, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything that is in the heaven and in the earth. Ma yakunu min najwa salasatin illa huwa radi adam that when three people are having a secret conversation and three people are having a conference indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the four he is the four that means that there is nothing that is hidden from us any secret planning any secret conversations of all heard by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is a witness to that to that secret conference even if there are five people who are having this secret conversation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sixth of him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there is nothing more and nothing less. He is with them wherever they are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he is a witness to what we do secretly and openly and on the day of judgment he will inform us. This ayah has many things in it. Uh, I think that the reference to he is the fourth out of three, he is the sixth out of five are just metaphors to imply private and public. So he is witness to all those things which are secretly planned, privately and publicly. But what he's saying in this are three things. One, that he watches. Number two, that he knows. And number three, he is keeping an account of it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alim, he knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a rahib, he watches. He is also a shahib, so someone who is living witness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says many places in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna Allah khana alaykum raqeeban. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surely Allah is a watcher over you. Raqeeban. He is indeed a watcher over you. And this word raqeeb is very different from shaheed. It's, it's, it's not the same thing as he is witnessing you, 
but as he's saying that he is watching over you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Inna Allah kana ala kulli shayin seed. And indeed he is also over all things and accounts. He's keeping account of everything. It's not just a matter of deeds, but also things that we don't do, things that we think, things that we desire, things that we hope we can achieve. So he is witnessing that which is in the world of Zahir, that is apparent, and that which is hidden. The world of thoughts, the world of your heart. He is a witness. And he's not just a witness, but he's watching. He's Rahim and he's Shaheed and he's Hasid. He is keeping track of these things. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And he says, Anta ala kulli shayin shaheed. So he's now what 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 is the purpose of of, uh, of putting these three ayats together? And, and all of you I'm sure you know these ayats, you recite that in the Quran, you have reflected upon them. The whole point of referring to all these three things is to bring these three concepts together. <coughs> Number one, the concept of watching over. The concept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our waqa, that He is watching over you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shahi, He is watching. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping an account. All these things were in the ayah that I just recited to you. In, in the famous hadith of Jibreel, Jibreel alayhi salam asks Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, several questions and one of the questions was what is Ahsan? And Prophet answered the question and said Ahsan is Anta abidu allaha ka anna ka tarahu falam takum tarahu inna hu yaraka Ahsan is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him. In the case that you cannot see him, know that indeed he sees you. So, so Ahsan is a stage, it's, it's, it's a it's a daraja, it's a ha, it's a condition in which some people exist when they become very pious, when they come very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them. So when they worship and when they serve, you can interpret ta'abudu as if to worship him or to serve him. In fact, when you interpret that as to serve him, it includes lots of things. Khidmat al-khalq, the service of humanity is another way of serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not just prayer and recitation of the Quran, but serving and caring for humanity, doing a fundraiser for the tragedy in Nepal, is also a service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one interesting hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when I was sick, you did not visit me. And what he's implying is that your brother and your neighbor were not well, and you did not visit him. If you visited your neighbor, you, it's like visiting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we give zakat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you give it to me. When you give sadaqah, it is like having a transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we, we do service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we do it with a dedication and an application which is of the highest standard, we are in a state of ihsan. And in that state of ihsan, we are serving Allah as if we are seeing Him. The Arabic is ka'anna. It doesn't mean that you are seeing Him. It is a metaphorical way of saying as if. You are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He's seen. Now, I, I find this this particular answer absolutely fascinating. I've been reflecting on it for more than four years and writing about it. Because if you notice, it presents a duality in which the believer is following the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we say that we are worshipping as if we are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the best form of shahada. So you are a shaheed, you are witnessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But know that even if you cannot see him, he sees you anyway. So whether you are in that stage of your belief and your deeds that you are able to envision Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or whether you are not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a witness over you. So the highest stage of, 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 of belovedness that we can reach with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a state where we witness him and he witnesses us. So it's like we are mirroring each other. That's how we become a mirror. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at us. He's a raqib. He's a shahid. He's, he's, he's doing his hisab. He's keeping accounts of us. And we are also doing the same thing. We are not watching over him. We are not keeping account over him. But we are witnesses. 
So in that sense, we become mutual witnesses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the witness of our existence, he is the witness of our life, he is the witness of our deeds, and we are witnesses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his rahmah, his tajalli, his magnificent, his benevolence, his forgiveness, his anger. We are a witness over that. But what of those of us who are unable to envision us? What of those? then at least we have to be acutely aware that we are being watched. It is our rahim. And this state of rahadah, it is this state that we need to focus on. When we are able to witness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we talk about it as if we are in a state of mushahada. We are witnessing. And in this state, we are both the shaheed and the mashhud that who is watching and that who is watched. The word mashhud is the, the object of the word Sahara. It's called mafud, ism mafud. What it really means, it's very interesting. It, like for example, you say captain is one who writes, maktub is one, that thing which is written. But when we say shahid is one who watched, when you say mashhud, we don't actually mean that which is watched or that which is witnessed, but we actually mean that which is recognized. So what is incredible about this, this is that, that through our witnessing, we recognize our neighbor. And it is this recognition which is the highest state of our, the highest daraja. Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah said the highest daraja of faith above Islam and Iman is Ihsan. In fact, before him, people had not seen it in a hierarchy. People always thought it of, as three different things. So Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah in his Kitab al-Iman writes of it as a daraja. And since then, Muslims have been thinking of it as different Daraja. First you become very submissive, you obey the law, you follow the strict Sharia and then you become a Muslim because you have submitted yourself to the will of Allah. And then because of your strict practices there is faith in your heart and you gain Iman. And as your Iman becomes stronger and stronger you reach the state, especially through, through doing ob non-obligatory worship. Through Nawafil, when you do more and more of Nawafil you reach the state of Ihsan. And then you are able to witness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to witness it. So one of the journeys to that state is the state of muraqaba. Where you... Let me put it this way, that one of the best ways to aspire to become a good Muslim, to become an Muslim, <coughs> one who does beautiful things, is to emulate the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran testifies many times that there is no God but Him. And as Muslims, we also testify that there is no God but Him. La ilaha illa anta. We are testifying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is no God but Him. And in that, the thing that makes us Muslim is an emulation of the sunnah of al-Nusra. That is his practice. He testified that there is no God. That's how we know. And then we follow his testimony. So one way is to bring this asma ul husna, these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives and in our practices. And the way we try to bring those little things in our life is by trying to be a rahib over oneself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a rakib over you, he is a rakib over all things, he is watching his creation and we also emulate him. That we start watching and witnessing this universe. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, go and see what has happened to civilizations who have gone astray. And I think it is further kifaya for Muslim social scientists to write the history of fallen civilizations, the rise and fall of civilization. Muslims must write it. This is an order from the Quran to understand why. Why did the Native Americans on this continent disappear? It is for Muslims to write the history, at least American Muslims. I think it is a further kifaya. Somebody should, I keep telling all my PhD students, somebody hopefully will do the dissertation on that. So it is our job also to be a rahim, not just over this, but most importantly about ourselves. 
So murahaba is a state where you keep a watch over yourself. It's like being vigilant. It's like saying that NSC, the FBI is watching us. We also watch ourselves to ensure that we do not do anything that will displease Allah subhanahu It's a state of taqwa. The exact meaning of taqwa. One who does murahaba is a muttaqi because the muttaqi is one who is afraid of doing anything that will displease Allah subhanahu So you watch over yourself, watch upon yourself to ensure that you do not do anything that will not. And when you are in this state of meditation, then you start taking account. You also become alhasid over yourself. <coughs> do this every night before you sleep. What did I do today? What did I do today? There's a health app on the iPhone which tells you how many footsteps you took, how many miles you walked, etc. It gives you a health. But it gives you health of your body, but not about your spirit and your heart. You should do it yourself. Make your own app and ask yourself, did I do something to hurt anybody today? Did I break a law that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not forgive me? Did I do, do something that distance takes me away from my Lord? And did I do anything that brings me closer to my Lord? Can I tomorrow do, not do the things that increase the distance between me and my Lord? And can I pray and hope to do the things that bring me closer to my Lord? That is the point of doing this, to do this murakhaba and to do this hisab every night before you go to sleep. You do that. To also be aware that we live, if imagine if you were living in a glass house and all your neighbors could see everything that you do, I guarantee you, you would be a better person than you are now. Especially when you're alone in your house, nobody can see, you could do lots of things that you could be uh, ashamed of telling people. One of the things that the internet did in the last two decades is allow people to do things anonymously. So they do things that they should not do. Because they think they will not be caught and nobody will know. <coughs> if everything that we did on the internet was next day published on some website, then I believe, tell you, people's taqwa will automatically rise. But imagine that life is like that. As far as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is concerned, we are living in a glass house. There is nothing that we can hide from Him. He sees everything we do. He knows everything that we think. He knows everything that we think. So we are living in a glass house. And that is very important. So it's important for you at the end of the day to replay the video of your day and look at it and say, Oh my God, what was it that I did that was wrong today? What was it that I did? Take account. And be merciful, be compassionate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahman Rahim. Forgive yourself, but pray that you do better. Let this exercise not become a source of inferiority complex. Let this not be a source of depression for you. Let it be enlightened. <coughs> Let it be something that will make you a better person. That is the maqsad. That is the purpose of our life. Is to become better through, through witnessing ourselves. If you notice one of the dominant themes of our being, of this creation, is light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Nur of Samawati wa He is the light. He sees everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that He has created us also in that sense. فَلَلْ insana ala nafsihi basiratun. Allah ta'ala says that indeed the human being sees his own self. Now this is very important. He sees his own self. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the light to enlighten ourselves by examining our soul. It is a capacity that he has given to us. And, and on the day of judgment, we will be our own witnesses against ourselves. It is because, and that is to me the most frightening thing. Before I talk more about that, I would, let's take a break, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Salatu wassalamu. Allah Muhammad 
mankind to his Lord is ungrateful. We are ungrateful for all the enormous blessings. We are ungrateful for this extra day he has given us. We are ungrateful because we have got to spend time in another month, a holy month. And we are also ungrateful to him. And he says, وَإِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيمٌ And indeed, he is going to be a witness. And that is very frightening to me, that the biggest witness against me on the day of judgment will be me. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order me to give a report card on myself, I will not be able to lie, I will not be able to hide, I will tell him everything that I did. How ungrateful, how great a sinner I was. And the reason for that, and I thought a lot about it, as to why would I be a witness against myself? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the opportunity to plead the fifth and say, Ya Allah, I plead the fifth. I do not want to incriminate myself. It's not going to, my soul will testify against myself. And the reason for that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us do muraqaba unconsciously. So whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you believe in it or not, you are a raqib over yourself. So your soul is already watching you. And it is also keeping hisab on you. And on the day of judgment, it will hold you accountable. Your soul will do it. When I call and I beseech you that you bring the practice of murakhaba in your life daily today, all I'm saying is that that part of you which is unconscious, make it conscious. So actually have a dialogue with your soul every day and say, okay, fine, you've kept an eye on me. Let me know what I did wrong today. Be my partner. Don't be my judge. Don't become a prosecutor for me on the day of judgment. Become the defense attorney. So let my soul become my partner. And the way you can recruit your soul in becoming a better person is through this practice of morale. It is not a good experience. I can tell you, once you start looking at yourself in the mirror of your soul, you see such ugliness that shocks you. Maybe sometimes being rafil about ourselves is Allah's way of protecting us. It could be a nema. But we are not going to get better. If, when I look in the mirror, I see a fat man. That pushes me to do something about losing weight. But if I become blind to the fact that I can't see and see an outfit gap in the mirror, then I will not improve. So it's very important for us to look at our soul the same way. That can we look at our soul in the mirror and say, oh my God, there are so many things about this thing that needs to be fixed. People have reduced the meaning of our deen and the meaning of what it means to be a good Muslim to very simple. You know, there's this book called Islam for Dummies. There are these books called Islam for Dummies, Quran for Dummies. This is what people who are going and joining ISIS are actually buying on the internet these days. They don't even know their deen. We have simplified our deen. Part of it is because we are disconnected. We go to schools that do not teach us our deen. We become engineers, doctors, blah, blah, blah. We live in societies where we are not taught our deen systematically and then disconnect from our <coughs> deen. Some people start learning at a later rate and so on. But it is not. That simple. What you need to understand is this. For example, people now think that being a good Muslim is being ritually competent. Let me tell you, even the munafiqs of Medina used to pray five times a day. Not only did they pray five times a day, they prayed with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What would none of us give? All of us would give everything that we have for one salah with Rasulullah. But they prayed five times a day in Masjid al-Nawi right behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some with deities hidden under their armpits. So just showing up at the mosque and praying is not proof of Iman. Islamic scholars have long ago concluded the Salah is not proof of Iman. It is what is proof of Iman is Salafah. The charity that you give, that 
from the wealth that you love is much better proof of your Iman than than so. So we must understand that in order to understand our deen and become a better person, that is the purpose of life, is to come as close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you. For those, for some people, it is, there, there is this, this tradition which some people question is to die before you die. The whole purpose, because the Quran promises that once we die, we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will have the vision, we will be truly uh, this is like truly testifying that we, that there is one God. But to die before we die is to have the same state, that same heart, where we are so acutely, so deeply aware of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we become the shahid and he becomes the mashud. That is the important purpose of life, is to bear witness in the horizon and in our soul. You can see the signs of Allah on the horizon. So look at it. Be a witness to it. Accumulate knowledge. And then you can find the signs of Allah in your soul. And that is why many scholars have said that know yourself and you will know God. And in order to know God you can, through yourself, you need to do muraqala. This morning when I got up, like all good Muslims, I reached for my iPhone and picked it up. And now, you know, with the new ones, you don't even have to post a code. You just put your Shahada finger on it and you have access to it. And so I went to the Quran. I wanted to, on the day I give put by, I randomly search for the Quran to see, to see if I can get some mystical advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what to talk about. But today I accidentally pressed the Islamic calendar instead of the Quran and I looked at the date and it's the 12th of Rajab. Uh, you know the Arabic and Islamic calendar changes at, after Maghrib. So today it will be 12th and today will also be the 13th of Rajab. And according to some scholars, there is no consensus or HMA on this, today happens to be the birthday of the fourth Caliph of Islam, Ali radiallahu anhu. There are no traditions of, of us celebrating birthdays of the Sahaba or anything, but I thought you should know that today is the birthday of the fourth Caliph of Islam, Ali radiallahu anhu. He is a very, very, he was a very, very special companion of the Prophet. Uh, I don't know whether it has occurred to you, but he is the only companion about whom there is complete consensus that he has authority. You understand the Muslim community is very divided into various, various uh, uh, Sunni, Shia, Ismaili, etc., etc., etc. But he is the only one that all the divided Muslim communities accept him as political authority. Uh, I don't know what you can do with this information. The least you should do is take half an hour out and see if you can read his biography and learn some lessons from his life. He was a courageous man, he was an intellectual, he was deeply in love with his deen. When someone asked him about this hadith of Jibreel and said, Ya, ya, ya Ali, what does it mean? Can you, how can you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he replied, do you think I would worship something that I do not see? It's a very interesting thing. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he institute in all of us this capacity to do muraqaba, to reflect upon ourselves, to become self-critical, to become individuals who are self-critical and individuals who live in self-critical societies, inshallah. <laughs> أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا للصلاة هيا للصلاة هيا البلاء هيا البلاء من قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله. <تصفيق> <تصفيق>
الصفوف يرحمكم الله فإن تسوية الصفوف من تمام الصلاه الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين إياك نعبد إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغفور مغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أنتم أشد خلقا من السماء رفع سمكها فسواها وأغطش ليلها وأخرج ضحاها ولرض بعد ذلك دحاها أخرج منها ماءها ومرعاها والجبال أرساها 
متاعا لكم ولأنعامكم فإذا جاءت الطامة الكبرى يوم يتذكر الإنسان ما سعى وبرزت الجحيم لمن يرى فأما من طغى وآثر الحياة الدنيا فإن الجحيم هي المأوى وأما من خاف مقام ربه ونهى النفس عن الهوى فإن الجنة هي المأوى الله أكبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم السلام عليكم